right. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to oppose this motion. And I do have various reasons why I urge the House to reject this motion. Some of them are purely based on the law. Because the motion, in certain respects, does breach statutes. And as such, this House cannot condone a motion that breaches statutes. Mr. Speaker, if you allow me to move because I have limited time, I wish to draw the attention of the House to the affidavit in support of the motion. The affidavit is sworn by the mover of the motion before a commissioner for odds. It is also very clear from the motion that the affidavit was drawn by a law firm of Messrs. Brian, Kaeba, Kamau, and Kamau and company advocates. It then becomes apparent on the face of the record that the affidavit was commissioned by the same advocate, Odruid. That advocate is Mr. Brian Madila Kaemba, who is of the law firm of Brian Kaemba, Kamau, and Kamau and Company. That being the case then, this affidavit is in a direct contravention of the Oaths and Statutory Declarations Act, Chapter 15 of the Laws of Kenya. And the offended section is the Section 41 of that particular Act. Because it expressly prohibits any person who is administering the oath not to have any interest in the matter. Having done so, then it means the affidavit in support is faulty, and the speaker has the discretion to expurge it from the record. If that is done, it means then the affidavit and all the supporting documents go with it. If that happens, then it means we have a motion that is not supported by any evidence. The consequence of that is that the motion cannot stand as it is and should actually fail. For that reason, and I do reserve, I do reserve my rights to raise this at any stage, I urge the House to reject this motion for being in the contravention of the statute. Number two, it is vitally important that as we debate, we also know that this house is not a guillotine. A guillotine, for those who do not know, was an instrument of execution during the French Revolution, which was in the 18th century. And the purpose of the guillotine was actually to chop off everybody's head when it was brought before that particular tribunal. We must go to what our Constitution says, which is exactly what we have before the House. What does a Cabinet Secretary do? Because the offenses we have here are all on the allegations of having approved. He made approvals for certain contracts, he made approvals for certain disbursements, he made approvals. The question we ask is this. Under our constitution and the law, who is the accounting officer? Can a cabinet secretary be held responsible for matters that are discharged by an accounting officer? Truly, a cabinet secretary is not an accounting officer. 
he is not responsible for approvals that have been enumerated here. And as such, we have actually brought the cabinet secretary before this house where we are now being asked to actually guillotine him. And I urge the house to reject the process of guillotine. We also have been told in as much as we cannot say uh, the matter is subjudice before parliament. My submission before the house is that this matter is seized by parliament and it is premature. It is premature in that the matter was brought to the house, it was committed to agriculture committee and agriculture committee is still working on it. We are also informed that there are other government agencies that are investigating the matter. The net effect is that the results of these investigations may actually exonerate the cabinet secretary and therefore if this house proceeds with the motion as it is we are we have the possibility there is a likelihood of making a premature decision and this is what we are terming as guillotine so honorable members as we debate we must also uh, confine ourselves to the provisions of the Constitution, to the provisions of the law, so that we do not execute an unjust uh, matter before the House. What would happen if... Yes, Otienda Mola, there's a point of order, Murugara. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have labored to listen to my chairman make his submissions on this point. And he has made two points which essentially question your directions on this matter. He has made submissions on the admissibility of the affidavit. Now he's making submissions on the admissibility of the debate on account of the 